Hi, I'm Ruth Medjber and welcome to Out of the Darkroom on Adorama TV. I'm here today in Croke Park, which is Ireland's largest sports stadium. It has a capacity of over 80,000 people. It's also home to the Gaelic Games, which includes hurling. Some of you might know that this is the fastest field game in the world. And what do you need when you're shooting fast field games? You need fast photographers, just like my guest today, Stephen McCarthy. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjbear. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us here today. You must be uh, well at home in Croke Park. Yeah, thanks for having me. It is, uh, it is really, we spend so much time here uh, during the year. Um, it is it's nice to be back here, not yeah. having a load of cameras and ha having the pressure on. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's nothing for you to shoot today. Don't no, worry, no. you can relax. You just, we're just <laughs> having a chat. So tell me um, a bit about what you do. I mean, because you you work pretty much every single day. You take tons and tons of photographs. What kind of stuff do you shoot? Yeah, well, I'm a staff photographer at uh, Sportswell, the agency in Ireland. So we're the largest agency. And, um, we'd have a lot of clients in both the media industry and governing bodies and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, every day of the week we're doing sport. Um, and if it's not a match or, or press conference, it's something to do with sport. So if that's portraits or promotional stuff like that. It's a whole a, variety of yeah. stuff. Like, I mean, I've been looking back through your portfolio and you've shot just about everything relating to sports. So, I mean, press conferences and, and field work and everything like that, it's so varied. How did you learn how to do so many different styles of photography? Um, I, di I didn't go to college. So did you not? No. no. So I went to work experience to, to the sports while agency when I, was, when I was still in school. Ah, okay. So I went for a week and uh, I just loved it. I absolutely loved it and I said, okay, whatever happens, I have to come back here. So, what was it about that? I mean, did you like photography element of it, or did you just like the whole sports <laughs> side of things? Well, I suppose number one, I was a sports fan. But the uh -huh. second, I was into the media side of things. I, like, um, so I used to do a bit of writing and and, uh, and journalist work. But then I, I also used to take pictures. So I used to go to local games and and stuff like that. And I always found the picture so much easier than the writing. So I said, you know what? I'm, this is where I want to go. And I wanted yeah. to work in the media side of it. I just love that. So I, um, yeah, so I continued on and uh, went for my week's work experience and, and said I have to get back here. So I went home, done my exams, um, and I just had no interest in my exams after that week. I said I have to. You had the I bug. Have, you yeah, you knew I need what to you go wanted. Back. So the day after, um, the day after my exams, I just got on the train from from Kerry and came to Dublin and started learning. And at first I was told to come back for the summer. Yeah. And then the summer moved on, and I was to, I wasn't told to go home, so yeah. I, 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 so just, I just kept turning up every day. The <laughs> yeah. So then after so long, I was kind of getting pictures after a while, and I said, you know what, let's let's keep bringing him. Yeah. And he's getting lucky Let the anyway. Kid do it. He knows yeah. what he's doing. So you yeah. just you just picked up information as you went, and you just learned on the on the road life. Yeah, with definitely. Everyone. We, we, we were a really good team and a really helpful team of guys. So if you show your interest, that they'll help you. They'll go out of your way. Yeah. Uh, they're out of their way to help. Um, so yeah, that's where I just learned learn from your mistakes is one of the biggest things. Like if you make a mistake and you're told about it, yeah. you won't make it a second time. You've learned so much on the job that now you're you're out there. You've been in sports file as a professional full time photographer now for years, and you're winning awards left, right, and center. You're really knocking it out of the park there. I mean, how important are awards in in your industry? Um, they they kind of are. It's, I suppose awards are really for your own ego, which <laughs> maybe I have quite a big ego at times, and I'll be told that from my own colleagues. <laughs> but come here, awards are often subjective as well, so we we don't read too much into it. It's nice to get the recognition yeah. at the end of a year, or and it, it's somebody so for somebody else to say, Do you know what, that's a nice picture, and then it gets the exposure. Yeah. A, a lot of our pictures go unnoticed, and yeah. some of them are really good, but they mightn't fit a shape in a page, or it mightn't be the right story. Yeah. So they, sometimes they just don't get noticed. So when you get a picture that's recognized on a world stage or a national stage, it's, it's quite it's nice. It's a different yeah. audience, I suppose. It yeah. must be nice. And I like that you're yeah. saying that it is. It's completely subjective. It is, like, yeah. so. Some of the best pictures don't always win prizes. I mean, when something lands on a front page for you, is that more of an achievement, say? I mean, because you're shooting every day for the press, really, aren't you? You know, you, you want stuff to land on a picture desk and then to go out to all the media and stuff. Yeah. So how does that feel to get front pages? Uh, it's it's nice. Like every day you go, out, you you're going out to get the front page. Yeah. Like, so there's there's no if you're going, you have to have that in your head. If it's press conference, if it's a match, if it's training, you're going out for the front page. Okay. It, okay. More often than not, it won't happen. But there is now and again you you land that front page and you said you know that that was a good day's work. You, I'm looking there. There's bodies, there's lenses, there's everything. How big is your kit bag? What uh, do you bring to a game? It depends where we're going. It's like. 
the one thing we were told from when we started was you have to have the right lens. There's yeah. no point in going with a lens and just making do with it. So often you will travel to things where you're carrying way more than you actually need just because you don't know what's going to happen. So you're better um, off having, all having that. it. Yeah, like so athletics is one area where you have to bring a lot more than usual. Yeah. So I can go to a rugby game and just bring bring a 600, a 70, 200, and a 24, a 70. And Even that's loads to me, well, that sounds yeah, like that. Yeah. So typical rugby game, you'd have your 600, 24 to 70, and a 200, or a 70, 70 to 200. Yeah, that's right, yeah, so 600, what we see is, because uh, we're using uh, Nikon D4Ss, we're, we're, they're full frame bodies, so you have to have a 600 now. So tell me about it, you're set up then with your D4S and your and your 600 mil F4, on, and whereabouts would you be in the, in the stadium? Yeah, so more often than that, we'd have maybe two staff at a big international or three. So we'd always go as close as we can to the corner. That gives you the to most the to the corner flag. That gives you the most scope on the pitch. So okay. you so you can see the most amount of the pitch. Yeah. Um, and percentages are the try will come uh, into the corner. That's the okay. hardest place because that's where the opposition will always push the team as far out as possible. So they'll go in in the corner. So that's where you give yourself the best okay. chance. So you're sitting there. You have your six hundred and a seventy two hundred. You, you're shooting your action as soon as they get close. As soon as they fill the frame and it's a bit too tight, you're, you're dropping down. Okay. And then you're waiting for your, your 7200, you're waiting for, for the try to, to happen or whatever. Bit. Yeah. So your 600 will probably get you a good distance in the middle of the field, and then you're yeah. shooting, you're shooting, you're shooting until they get too close to you, and then you switch out and for your 7200. Yeah. yeah, so you have to do that. So really you have quick. to be quick. Yeah, You exactly. have to be super quick. How do you make it so quick to get it? Because I'm looking at your shots, you know, you've got the composition right, the ball is where it's supposed to be. The play, like it, it's almost like you stage some of these shots. They're fantastic, and they're so sharp, and they're so, and I know they're happening so quick. How do you focus so quickly? Um, I think the big thing is about knowing your camera. You have to know your camera and its capabilities. Okay. Um, and the camera's gone so advanced now, mm. you have to understand them now more than ever. So, and different sports rely on different settings. So, um, you've got 52 point tracking, or yeah. 52 points, uh, focus points, points in, your, yeah. in, your, in your D4S. Yeah, right. um, and, you've done, and then you've, you've three other options after that. So you've got, or four other, you've single point focus, yeah. you've nine point focus, mm. you've 21 and then 51. Single point focus is grand, but it, it's, it's too accurate, okay? So you, unless you're spot on to it, so if yeah. a guy's running at you or running sideways, you have to lock right onto him. Yeah. So you've no you've And no he's chance. going so quick. Yeah, so you, you've no chance of, uh, if, if it slips, that's it, it's no gone. Room okay, to, yeah. yeah. So what do you then, I'd more often then go up to nine point or 21 point. It's a, it's a, it's a bigger focusing yeah. point and then it has a better chance of locking. Yeah, and these guys are big guys, they're not small. You, okay. like, you, you, you have enough room to, to catch them. So there's that. And then you also have to, um, the focus speed. So you, can, there, you have different settings on your yeah. focus. So, so that when it, if something comes in the way of the camera or of the subject, so if, somebody, if, you, if you're focusing on a player yeah. and somebody runs across you, you can't afford for the focus to pick up that pick guy. Up on him, yeah. yeah so, You've different settings there, so you've got fast, you've got long and short. I think yeah. is what it is. Um, so then you'd, you'd have it on just that little bit longer, so that if something, if the camera does get distracted, yeah. that it doesn't it's not chase off. Take any notice of yeah. it. What I noticed about your work as well is that you kind of set yourself apart from your colleagues and from other sports photographers in that. I'd say you almost treat it like it's documentary work because there's a lot of elements that you shoot that I wouldn't consider sports, but they're fantastic to see. There's something that I'd never pick up on, you know, you know, usually. So, I mean, I'm talking about the kids at the sideline having their snack while people are racing by or um, when, you know, the, the opponents are shaking hands. You've chosen to, to zoom right in, crop everything else out except for the handshake. I mean, that shows great sportsmanship from them and there's different elements that you, that you push. Would you ever consider you know, going into documentary photographer, or are you firmly a sports photographer? Uh, I probably am firmly a sports photographer. I, I, just, I love the buzz of sport. Yeah. Um, well, you're always, I think what, you're always looking for different angles as well. Yeah, yeah, and like some of these things, uh, some of the, uh, the things you've mentioned can happen in really long races yeah. or long events. So if you think of a 50K walk, that's a long, that's a long race, okay? okay? And then you have, let's say, a 10,000 meter um, final or something like that. Yeah. There are long races and you have to keep yourself occupied, but there's also some great emotion 
in yeah, sport. Yeah, absolutely. There's some fantastic emotion. So it's, it's, it is out there. The yeah. pictures are there. It's yeah. whether you can see them or if you can, if you can capture them or if you're in the Do right you place almost, at the right time. The, um, the emotive shots, you know, the, you've got a great picture of two lads kind of like hugging at the end. It must be at the end of, of a race and you just see the expression is, in his face is so intense. Are you waiting for those shots? Are you anticipating that I know when there's got to be great, you know, emotion moments or is that just you're quick off the mark and you can see them and you snap yeah. them? No, I'd like to say I was quick off the mark, but I think you, you've a, most other fellows will know where these are going to happen as well. So, so you line it up. Yeah, you, you, know, you know where it's going to happen. You know the race is going to happen and you get some great reactions at the end. And it's not something. always about the first guy that crosses the line. Yeah. It's, it could be about the last guy yeah, and the second last guy who carried each other around just to make the finish. Oh, wow. Yeah. You do almost different techniques. Some of them, whether you're using like a slow shutter speed or whether you're panning and stuff. Can you tell us about different styles that you use? You have a race where Mo Farah is at the front and it's just it's just there's so much action in that shot it's incredible can you maybe tell us a little bit about how you got that shot yeah yeah that was at the um european championships in zurich last year yeah. um and the that was i think that was a ten thousand meter race and it, again that's a, a really long race okay. and you you have to keep yourself occupied because otherwise if you just stand there on the finish line waiting for something to happen you're going to get bored okay. um so and that's 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 what I love about athletics. It's up to you to make that picture. So you can wander on the track, and and that's one of the races where the speed is consistent the whole way around. And then when you're on the bend, you've that bit longer to track them. So that's where it's, uh, I've done my my panning picture that you spoke of. Um, so that might be down to maybe a tenth of a second or. So that's when you're panning and you're you're going. Yeah. Like so them. you just you pick them up when they're coming off the bend, yeah. and just keep following and following them, and you have to follow through again at, at the end. No, there, it takes a couple of attempts. It's, I'm not going to yeah. say every picture was perfect. Um, well, to, you got it, you yeah. know? So, I mean, so you're using your downtime to get a little bit more artistic with your shot, so it's not just a straight shot. It's, yeah, of course. It's like, it's, Mo Farah is going to celebrate crossing the line, and everybody's going to have that. Yeah. But you have to push yourself. You, your picture has to stand out. There's no point having the same picture as everybody else. Yeah, there, there might have been 60 photographers on that finish line, wow. all waiting on Mo because they know he, what he's going to do at the end. Yeah. Uh, so it's up to you to make your picture stand out, and that's what you, that's what pushes you ahead and gets yeah. you noticed. Um, so yeah, that, that was a, that was a nice picture, and it just passes a bit of time as well when you're doing these things. Um, is there anything that you like seeing? So say you're out in Croke Park, and you know there's a there's a match, or maybe you're in a rugby stadium, and um, is there anything that happens, like whether it be weather or something in a match, like a fight or something gets cut? Is there anything that you love seeing that you're like, oh, this is going to make a great photo? Um, I suppose what we love is celebrations. Yeah. <laughs> we love them. Yeah. All you're looking for is that celebration picture that is just going to stand out and you just like, yeah, that's, that's the winner. Tell us then, just finally, is there anything, is there any big sporting event that would be the holy grail for you to shoot? I don't know, maybe World Cup or yeah. Rugby World Cup um, with Ireland in it, which that isn't that's, beyond. That's uh, doable. Yeah. yeah. Um, are, you, are you always gunning for Ireland then at any international event? You, you would, yeah. 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 You, want, you, you want as much hype around these things yeah. because then that means there's more demand for your stuff and there's when you more attention. Home, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, there's only so much dejection people can take. So yeah. you want success. So as much success as possible. And that keeps it on the front pages as well as the back pages. So we just yeah. don't want to be on the back anymore. We want to knock the news guys out <laughs> in the front. So You want sports to be like yes. front page stuff every single <laughs> every day. day. There's nothing else happening in nope. the world. It's yeah. just sports. And all positive news. <laughs> That's great. Well, listen, thanks so much. I learned a load today from this show. And uh, yeah, I, I can't thank you enough for joining me. Um, I can't wait to see some of more of your shots on the front page. Yeah, Cheers, Stephen. Thanks a million. Thank you. That's it for this episode of Out of the Dark Room. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Adorama YouTube channel where I'm going to be posting lots of more great videos. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them below. I do read them and I appreciate the feedback. And if you'd like to brush up on your own photography skills, be sure to visit the Adorama Learning Centre where you're going to find some lots of great reviews, tutorials and workshops. That's it for now. I'll see you again soon. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.